really goes back to the mid 50s when you know at, at, at the flip of a coin it seemed like the Soviet Union and the United States would be would be sending bombers at each other what's happening guys and welcome back to yet another great video on our channel a Cold War bunker is the very final hope for survival for any human being in case of a nuclear war. It represents the highest precautionary measure against complete human destruction. But these days, it's a place to visit unlike any other vacation spot. So let's have a look at the Cold War nuclear bunker that's been turned into the ultimate staycation. But before we do that, subscribe to our channel and do remember to hit that bell icon so you always stay updated about our channel whenever a new video goes up. Now let's start the video. Number 4. The White Sulphur Springs When I came here to organize the archives for the Green Bar, which is how I really discovered an amazing history to this place. Since even before the 19th century, the White Sulphur Springs in West Virginia in the Allegheny Mountains has been a holiday resort for the wealthy and privileged. The Greenbrier, a 6,500-acre boutique hotel operated by CSX Corp, started out as a guest house and dispersed summer houses. It has a spa, three country clubs, equestrian paths, trout rivers, skate shooting, bowling, luxurious stores, a cooking academy, a museum, and a railway terminal among other amenities. However, its most prominent institution is anything from elegant, from a gloomy aim that's the polar opposite of leisure. It's a massive subsurface nuclear bunker constructed during the Cold War and controlled in obscurity for three decades, planned for use by the whole United States House of Representatives in the case of nuclear warfare toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ruskies as shown in the movie Dr. Strangelove. The bunker, formerly known as Project Greek Island, but more widely recognized as the bunker, was deactivated in 1992 after its whereabouts was disclosed by the Washington Post. It has become a renowned, if somewhat dismal, tourist destination since reopening last summer after a two-year refurbishment. The visits have been given on a first-come, first-served basis since before the 1960s. Number 3. The Government Operations this really captures a moment in time, a moment uh, that was filled with a lot of fear. Chairman Dwight D. Eisenhower proposed burying the bunker beneath the Greenbrier. He came to the resort frequently to have high-level meetings and golf with Sam Snead. The national government was constructing dozens of contingency operations and evacuation centers in a wide radius around the country's capital from Pennsylvania to North Carolina, either drilling into foundations or cutting out hills. The Greenbrier, located about 250 miles southwest of Washington, was far enough away from town to withstand a nuclear first attack while still being conveniently accessible by car, train, and aircraft. In 1958, excavating commenced. CSX constructed a massive extension to the facility, the West Virginia Wing, under a top secret arrangement, and the command center was erected beneath it. CSX licensed the facility to the national government. It's the equivalent of two soccer stadiums packed beneath the earth, measuring more than 100,000 square feet, with concrete blocks four or five feet thick. It was designed to house 1,100 individuals, including 535 congressmen and elected officials, as well as their staff. The bunker was finished in October of 1962, just in time for the Cuban Missile Situation, which turned out to be the only time it was placed on red alert. For the following three decades, military specialists masquerading as Foresight Associates personnel looked after the facility, periodically maintaining its telecommunication and research facilities, and replenishing the publications and paperbacks in the lounging spots. They also fixed the television sets in the hotel's 800 guest rooms and villas as a precaution. In 1978, Robert S. Conte left the Federal Archives in Washington to work as a senior archaeologist at the Lodge. In a new interview, he recounted that his role was maintaining the Greenbrier's records, presenting programs at the museum, and telling anyone who asked that the bunker was a hoax. For the following 14 years, he did it, constantly thinking he was cheating. Since the pit was made, the presence of the underground bunker had been rumored in neighboring Greenbrier County. Number 2. Visiting and Tickets 
I am getting ready to leave on an adventure. Have about a five hour drive to our destination, which is one of the most luxurious resorts in the United States, the Greenbrier Resort. When the presence of the bunkers was discovered, the authorities decommissioned any sophisticated technology and terminated the contract. The hotel began conducting tour packages for visitors and the general community in December of 1995, but the queues grew so long that visits had to be restricted to Greenbrier members for a while. According to Lynn Swan, the resort's corporate communications supervisor, around 300,000 people have taken the tour. The tours, which have been put on hold in 2004, while CSX turned much of the upper level of the building into a data storage room, began in late July with fresh materials and displays created by Mr. Conte to make up for the reduced area. They are now accessible to Greenbrier visitors and the general public for a fee of $30 for the grown-ups and $15 for kids in the age group of 10 to 18. Number 1. The Safety Plan was genau erwartet uns jetzt hier? Das ist ein richtig cooler NATO-Bunker vom Kalten Krieg, der jetzt schon seine Weile verlassen ist. The journey starts at one of four doorways parked out of the forest hillsides beneath the West Virginia wing. The 25-ton nuclear disaster gate is 10 feet broad, 12 feet long, and 18 inches dense. It was transported from Ohio along with three other items on customized transport vehicles. Three guard burrow openings come out from the hillside. The fourth is concealed behind a detachable wallpapered panel inside the West Virginia wing. The massive gates airtight seal the structural components when they're closed. For the first 72 hours, there would be enough oxygen inside for 1,100 people to breathe, and after that, ventilation systems would have to be activated to allow potentially lethal external airflow in. So do let us know what are your thoughts about a nuclear bunker being turned into a staycation in the comments down below and whether you yourself will also be visiting the place one day. And with that, I'll catch you guys later in another video. Bye now!